Masking wispy hair in Photoshop used to be pretty darn difficult, but as Photoshop has improved over the years, it's gotten a whole lot easier. So I'm going to show you a way to do it really easily and very, very quickly compared to other methods that usually involve channels and levels. So the very first thing you're going to want to do after you have your image opened, and I have the main image here for the hair, and then it's a background image so I can kind of show what it looks like once it's actually masked out. Uh, you're going to want to go to the toolbar, and it's the fourth one down usually. You want to select the quick selection tool. If you have the magic wand tool, by default, just hold this down and select quick selection tool. And then what we're going to do, and you can change the size of the quick selection tool by using your brackets. Uh, the brackets are what's just to the right of the P key. So the bracket on the left makes it smaller and the bracket on the right makes it bigger. And you just want to very, very quickly select your image. And do not select the, the parts of the image like this up here. I'm going to call these transition areas where it's starting to kind of fade into the background or there's a lot of a lot of the background showing through you do not want to select that we're gonna let Photoshop do that work for us so we just want a very very rough mask here that gets all the main image and hopefully not a whole lot of that background like especially areas like this these little wisps out here don't select those and as you can see it, it it'll automatically select some things we don't want to select so I'm just gonna kinda of show us what to do here and I'm zooming in with control plus and control minus and if you're on a Mac use command plus command minus it's just a lot quicker for these areas like this that we don't want it selected I'm just going to use the bracket to make this a little bit smaller and then if you're on a PC hold down alt or if you're on a Mac hold down option so once again that's alt on a PC or option on a Mac and you can see if you look at the actual tool right here there's a plus sign when you hold that down it changes into a, a subtract sign and that just removes that quick selection. So you can kind of go over and paint those areas over and over again. The more times you do it, typically the better it does. But don't sweat the small details too much. Like once again, let Photoshop do that work for you. We just want a nice rough outline of what's going on here. This is looking pretty darn good, I think. We should be able to go to the next step. Once you have this selected, we're going to hit the mask tool. And that's right down here at the bottom, kind of by your Layers palette. If your Layers palette isn't open, just go to Window and then Layers near the middle here. But hit the Mask button with that layer selected. And it's right here. It looks like a rectangle with a circle right in the middle. And as you can see, that applies the mask we just made of the image, and it does not look very good. Actually, this background image is really pixely too, but that doesn't matter. But you can see it's a very, very rough mask. It's, it's not good enough for almost any professional use. So we're going to need to refine this. So what we're going to do is either right click or control click on a Mac on this mask, the actual mask here. And you're going to want to select refine mask. It's near the bottom. And this will bring up the refine mask window dialog box. Some quick things to notice is the view. I tend to switch between on layers and reveal layer so L and R are the shortcuts so if I want to see the background the original background here I just hit the R button and then the layers with the new background in the back I hit L so this way when I'm subtracting or adding parts of this hair I can very quickly just change back and forth so I kinda know where there's hair I'm missing out on and that'll help us in just a bit the first thing you want to do I hit L here to go back to the layers of this background turn on smart radius and then change the edge detection radius. Don't go too crazy. I tend to go right around five. Uh, that should be good enough. And then we're also going to change output right down at the bottom here. We're going to click detaminate colors and just leave it right at 50%. Now we're going to want to use this tool right here. And if I hold down on it, we have the refine radius tool and the erase refinements tool. The refine radius tool is what we're going to keep selected. And then as you can see, if I start painting with it, it reveals layers back here. So what this tool is basically doing is we're telling Photoshop, hey, there's hair to be found here. Add this to the mask. You know, like we want this wispy hair. And that's why hitting R to reveal the original layer and then L to show you what it looks like on the mask helps a whole lot. Because when I hit R, I can see here's that hair I'm missing out on. I need to kind of paint over this. And I have a little green mask here so I can just see it as I'm doing it. And I can kind of go over all these little wisps try not to go too crazy but when I hit L you can see it's very very quickly starting to give these wisps a little bit of substance I'm just gonna grab this stuff here and at any point in time too you can change the size of this tool up here with size don't worry about it too much though as long as it's roughly a good size I'm gonna make this just a tiny bit smaller 
I'm hitting L again to see what I'm missing out on. As you can see, these fine whistles up here are looking pretty darn good now, or a whole lot better in any case. I'm just going to go down here to this big bottom section. There's a whole lot to be gotten, so I'm just going to very, very quickly kind of go over it, let it know that it's there. Little wisps here. I'm not going to spend a, a huge amount of time doing this. I just want to kind of give you a quick overview of how quick this is. And once you get kind of used to doing it, it's a little bit weird at first. But once, especially once you get used to switching between back and forth here, it'll go a whole lot quicker. It was just missing on a little bit of stuff here. And this shoulder was kind of barren, so I'm going to change that. And here's a problem area. You can see that Photoshop basically softened this up a whole bunch. Uh, and the way to tell it not to do that is to hold down Alt once again. We still on, we're still on this tool right here. But when you hold on Alt, it's basically telling Photoshop, hey, I want to keep this, you know, so don't don't treat this like a mask. Don't don't remove it. And right here in the face, it started doing that a little bit too. So I'm just holding down Alt and kind of telling it. And then I'll go back in and try to get some of that hair back. It does take a little bit of playing around with, kind of going back and forth to get the look you want in the end. So it might take you a little bit of time. Let's just look at the original once again by pressing R. I'm going to try to get this just a little bit more. We're almost done though. I'm not going to fret the details too much for the purpose of this video. That'll be good enough for now. And as you can see, it got all these wisps pretty darn good, super quick. And you can kind of play around with detaminate colors and whether you want to use it or not. If it's checked off, whoop, I'm holding spacebar to scroll. And if you're doing that and you find it's not scrolling, it means this button is selected. So when I hit spacebar, it selects it and unselects it. So just make sure you click off before you use spacebar to kind of scroll around. But if you look at what Detaminate Colors does, if I turn it off here, this kind of loses its color saturation. And if I turn it back on, it kind of pops back in there. But as you can see here, overall, it did a really nice job. You can obviously spend a whole lot more time and get these details a whole lot sharper, but I don't want to spend, you know, 15 minutes on this. And also a trick you can do is deselect this chain link right here so that you're just editing the mask. Make sure that mask is selected and not the image. And with that mask selected, you can hit Control L on a PC or Command L on a Mac, which brings up levels. And you can tweak it just a tiny little bit to sharpen up the mask. So I usually just bring this middle arrow right here and I push it to the right slightly. And then I bring the right arrow right here and I push to the left just a tiny little bit. And if I check preview on and off, you can see it just sharpens things up a tiny bit. And in this case, it makes a nice difference. So I'm just going to hit OK. And you can, of course, always go back in and paint on the mask itself. So if I want to just use a straight up brush, set hardness to zero, that's good. Black will remove it and white will kind of add back to it. So you can kind of soften in any edges that, for whatever reason, didn't quite turn out nice. And any problem areas, like if you find this was too fuzzy for you, just go in with the brush afterwards and set the hardness. Just double click here. Uh, I tend to work on either 0% or 100%, uh, depending if I want a really sharp edge or a really soft edge. As you can see, you know, if you want to do just a pretty decent image, you can get all the wisp in there and get it going in five minutes or less pretty easily. And if you want to spend a whole lot more time for something crazy good, you can do that too. Uh, if this video was helpful, please hit like and favorite it. And also, consider subscribing if you want to see more videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching.